Welcome back, Shalligators. Oh yeah, it's the long-awaited Bella Hadid nose job admission video. I know, I'm so sorry. It's taken me a few days to get to this, but you know what has taken even longer than me doing this video? Bella Hadid confessing to getting a goddamn nose job, which we all knew. And you know what? I'm going to take credit for this because I was the original Bella Hadid nose job truther. I was working at Star Magazine. I went one day through our computer, like our, our photo grid system. Like you can go back through all the photo agencies. Like you can type in a celebrity's name and sort the date like earliest to most recent. And I went and I found that picture of her that everybody's seen. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? This chick is man-made. Hey, a lot of beautiful things are man-made. The Coliseum, the Eiffel Tower, even me in parts. And I never care if a celebrity has had work done. What have we always said? If you're going to speak on something, tell the truth. I understand if people want their privacy about something. Privacy is, I'm just not talking about something. Privacy is not, I'm gonna talk about it, but I'm going to lie. But you need to respect my privacy if you start to come up with like, you know, logic and you're using your eyeballs to see that what I'm saying makes no sense. You're using your brain to say that too. That's not privacy, that's gaslighting. And I've got a real problem with gaslighters. Why? I used to be one myself. And sometimes, kiddos, it takes a thief to catch a thief. So we're gonna break down why Bella Hadid is actually not in any way telling the truth right now. Like she's still completely lying through her probably also fake teeth. They're great teeth though. What she is not coming clean about, what her family has been lying about because we've got some truthers there. And we're gonna talk about how to gaslight someone else. Wait, Shallon, that's really bad. I know that. I'm the woman who does evil week. Get the memo. Haven't you heard? I'm the crazy bitch around here. By the way, I also used to write for Gossip Girl. Anyway, so we're gonna break all of this down because Bella is actually employing a great technique in terms of gaslighting, which is confess to a small thing so that people think you're actually truthful when in reality, you're lying about the vast majority of other stuff. It's a classic criminal's move, but we'll get into it. Before we do, if you wanna come hang out with me, yes, Shalligators, we are going to Mexico, Isla Holbash, August 19th through 23rd. We've got, I think, eight spots left. This trip is selling out. It's gonna book up really fast, really, really fast. So definitely reserve your space. We're gonna be doing things like, oh my gosh, Flamingo Island visits, snorkeling. I think we get to go to a bioluminescent bay where you swim and it's like sparkly because of like bioluminescent plankton. It's gonna be so sick. Whale shark diving, we're bringing a photographer, so we're gonna take a ton of content. It's just gonna be so much fun. It's gonna be so much fun. I would love to have you guys there with me. Also, if you need a little one-on-one -on -one help, head to my website, shallonlester.com and click submit a question. You can opt to get an answer in just 24 hours, but no matter which option you choose, I get back to you no matter what. Or if you want a little custom video from me, head over to cameo.com if you live in the US or memo.me if you live outside and you're an international cosmopolitan chickadee. Oh, by the way, on the last video about Haley and Justin, I know some of you guys say the sound doesn't work. It's a YouTube thing. It's not the video. The video is fine because a lot of you guys can hear it. So try logging out and logging back in. That's what seems to work. And I know some of you guys were like, can you turn on subtitles? Subtitles don't actually work that way, which is, so we can put a man on the goddamn moon and we can't just like, boop, have a computer automatically populate subtitles. On YouTube, you have to type them out yourself. If you guys know of a program that will do that for me, please let me know because I would I would love to do that. That would be great, but it's it's a lot of extra work. So that's why I couldn't just like turn them on because it's that's not how it goes. Okay. <laughs> Bella. <laughs> Where do we begin? I'm so frustrated with Queen Baloney because we've been saying this. Gaslighting, this is how gaslighting like makes us all crazy because it's meant to make us crazy. It's meant to make us doubt our own logic, our own cognitive abilities and critical thinking and just our own eyeballs. And Bella said some things. So here's what happened. She did this Vogue interview. And by the way, what the fuck has happened to Vogue? When is Vogue? I understand that they're like soft and whack and woke, but all they want to talk about is how everyone's a fucking victim. I don't really want to hear from a supermodel and hear about how hard her life has been. 
I don't know. I don't. And look, maybe some people do. Maybe they want to be like, oh, even beautiful people have a really difficult time of it. And that maybe that's like helpful and bolstering. I get that. Okay, that's that's fine. For me, I mean, I guess I would want to hear that if I could believe Bella was telling the truth. But she's just so unrelatable because she's everything she does just seems so calculated and contrived and not sincere. Do you remember? I think the last time we talked about her is when she posted that gallery of nine photos, nine selfies of her crying. <laughs> the camera just got closer and closer to his upper nose. Is she going to swallow the camera? Where are we going with this? And her talking about her anxiety and her depression. And it's like, the pandemic was still in full swing. Like, Bella, can you just read the room? Like, I, I know, what was the point of that? Like, were, are we supposed to feel like, sorry for you? Because I don't. Like, you have all the resources at your fingertips. Like, people would kill for even your biggest problem. You know what I mean? And not, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, your problems don't matter. Blech. There's some, there's starving kids in Africa. Your problems are your problems and they're completely valid. But when you celebritize your problems, when they become an identity, a personality point, you lost me. Because as I say all the time, that is not me. I would way rather brag and veer into that douche lane. And I do, I don't just veer. That's where I live. That's I'm in that lane. I'm never merging. Then to be a professional victim. I find it gross, especially when like, girl, you do have a ton of resources. You grew up rich. You grew up the uglier sister as she tells Vogue. OK, but you're still really beautiful and you're still thin and you still have great hair and like lovely teeth and beautiful eyes and exotic skin tone. Like, girl, come on. I just don't know how relatable she is. So she really doubled down on not being relatable because she, in this whole Vogue interview that was meant to be this expose and her really coming clean, she just fucking lied. She copped to getting a nose job at 14 and we're going to get into shredding her mother Yolanda because I don't blame Bella for this at all. What's so sad about this is, I guess we can shred Yolanda now. What's so sad about this, who at 14 loved the way they look? Nobody. 14 was tough for everyone. And it, it it bugs me when people are like, oh, I didn't like adolescence. Oh, I did. I fucking loved it. Like everyone hated it. But the reason we go through it is because it's growing pains. Like we, that is a critical time for us in the, not only development of like our body and our minds, but of our self-esteem where we have to develop those skills to learn confidence and to learn to love ourselves. And people who don't, it shows. People like Kylie Jenner. People who, when faced with not the perfect set of lips, and she always references like this one guy who is like, oh, I didn't think you'd be such a good kisser because you have such small lips. And she went off this confidence cliff and she never, she never got back up, ever. And instead of like her mother, her family, giving her like emotional tools, therapy, or just her creating it in herself, because look, we can't expect other people to do this work for us. We can't. She went to a doctor. That's what she did. And what did she do for years? She gaslit everybody. She gaslit everybody. She lied and she lied and she lied. You are never going to feel confident and worthy and whole and okay with yourself when that's all built on a lie, when you have to lie. You don't get to a truth through lying. You just don't. Listen. I've lost a lot of weight recently and I know you guys keep asking for a video on it. And I'm going to give it to you. And there's going to be a lot of people who do not like what I have to say. You're just not because the answer is not going to be the PC friendly quinoa in yoga. It's not. It's going to be things a lot of people don't want to hear, but it's going to be the truth because I would rather ha tell you something you don't want to hear than give you some bullshit that you're going to be like, well, I have tried quinoa and yoga and I didn't lose 30 pounds in four months. That's because that's not really what it is. But I digress. So I feel sorry for Bella that instead of having a family who prioritized emotional health, they prioritized physical beauty. And in that sense, of course, she's crying on Instagram. I can't get my mental health right. That was never really a priority to you. So 
You were never taught to create all of these things within yourself. So of course you're on Instagram crying, trying to get exactly that validation about your mental health that you were trying to get from your body and your face. You know, I get it. I get where this comes from. At the same time, she's 25 years old. She's an adult enough. That does not give you a right to gaslight your young, impressionable fans who don't understand that they don't look like a supermodel because they hit puberty like she did. That's not what it was. How do I know that Bella Hadid's face is not the result of puberty? Because we have the same doctor. Because we have the same doctor, girl. I'm not, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm going to say. All right? Let's read some of what Bella said. We're gonna shred Yolanda. We're gonna... People think I fully fucked with my face because of one picture of me as a teenager looking puffy. I'm pretty sure you don't look the same now as you did at 13, right? This is gaslighting right here. No, none of us look the same as we did at 13. I didn't. And I actually have no filler in my face now. I got it all dissolved last year. Ugh, I know. So this was like my analog face. And I look way different than I did as a teenager. And I always have. But I'm not a supermodel. And, okay. I have never used filler. Let's just put an end to that. I have no issue with it, but it's not for me. You're lying. Your lips look different. So there's something called the vermilion edge. And this is how you can tell if someone's had their lips done. The vermilion edge is like your lip line. Now true, you can line your lips and there's a million little tricks, but this is always the big giveaway. And one huge giveaway of the vermilion edge and lip filler is it's like this little, like, it's almost like this little shadow, like this mustache shadow, because your lip kind of pulls up. It The filler migrates. It, it goes beyond the borders of your lips and it it comes right up there. You can see it in some of these pictures of celebs. Like Haley Baldwin had it for a while. If I were to guess, I would say Bella maybe had like a lip flip, which is, I mean, I think she's had filler too, but a lip flip, which is Botox right there. I've had it. I tried it. It's it's fine. You, you kind of can't drink out of a straw, but it pulls, it makes the upper, this part of your lip like relax, flop down. So it makes your lips fuller without filler. It's kind of, and it's cheaper. It doesn't last very long. It only lasts like six weeks, but it's, if you're interested in trying a lip augmentation thing, it's kind of a good alternative because it's really kind of no harm, no foul. Or I think she's gotten filler and she's had her vermilion edge tattooed so that it's, because it's the crispest vermilion edge I've ever seen. And that's why I think she gets away with being like, oh no, 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 no. I've never had my lips done. I think she, yes, you have. She also claims that her brows, which are like this, like a Disney villain, same with Kendall Jenner's, are the result of face tape. Oldest trick in the book. Let's look at this photo. Where's the tape? Where would that tape be? Where? Uh, like embedded in, in your hairline? Where is it? You are getting photographed 360. Where's that tape? What she probably had done is a thread lift. It's like thread sewn into your skin and it, it's kind of like a marionette. I don't know, they're weird. But they can create like uh, ripples right there until they heal. And there's actually pictures of Kendall Jenner on a red carpet with those ripples. She had it done, I think, allegedly. I don't know. Like, come on. And again, if she is going to come clean, come all the way clean or say nothing. Why even do this interview if you're just going to keep on gaslighting people? Because she wants attention and she wants power. And Bella is one of those people who has celebritized her own suffering. She has. I don't get it. I'll never get it. I mean, I guess I have because her mother is the exact same way. Let's shred Yolanda. Here we go. <sighs> that woman is a viper. And you know what? You know what? I've been in Yolanda's corner for a long time. Now, yes, yes. My boss and I at Star, my old boss and I, if I'm the Bella Hadid nose job truther, he was the Bella Hadid Lyme disease lie truther. We, I told, I've told you guys this before. We went through the CDC records for that year. I think it was 2012 and looked at how many people got Lyme disease in California versus like Connecticut. Connecticut's like this big. California is like the whole, my whole forearm. 32 million people live in California. 32 million. And that was the year Yolanda claimed three 
of her kids, well, three people in her family, herself, Bella, and Anwar, all got Lyme disease that year. Do you know how many people got Lyme disease in that entire state? It was a few hundred. And three of them out of 32 million happened in the same household? Give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. Not true, true. Some of you guys said maybe they weren't in California. I mean, they, they have a farm out in Pennsylvania. Maybe that's true. I have still never heard of three people in one household being infected with Lyme disease at the exact same time because that's what she claimed. We all got it the same month, the same year. Knowing that Yolanda has spent the last decade lying about Bella Hadid's nose job. She has many quotes. My kids have never done anything to their face. They're 100% natural, 100% natural. Meanwhile, she knows her kid had a nose job. She encouraged it and fucking paid for it like a, like a monster. I don't believe anything this woman says, anything. I don't believe Bella ever had Lyme disease. Because look, well, Shallon, why would she make that up? To explain away her daughter's precipitous weight loss. Bella even came clean and said, I was anorexic. I had to go to treatment for it. I mean, did that make a dent? I don't know, because she's really thin still, but maybe it's in a better, uh, who even knows? Gigi also lost a ton of weight. Remember? Remember how much weight Gigi lost? And oh, it was, it wasn't an eating disorder because I'm a model. It wasn't drug use, which a lot of models fall prey to, especially if they're, I don't know, <laughs> dating a drug addict. <laughs> Who knows? No, 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 no. It was Hashimoto's disease. That's what it was. Maybe it was. But you know who was saying that? Yolanda was. And Gigi was. And again, I now don't believe anything anyone in this family says. I don't. I think they're chronic liars about their bodies and their health. And I would have so much more respect if Gigi was like, I had to drop 20 pounds because I'm a motherfucking catwalk model. And this is the job, okay? If I was a UFC fighter, I would have put on 40 pounds of muscle. That, that would be the job. If I was a firefighter, I'd have to run up a staircase holding someone on my back. I get, like, no one would be like, what? We would understand it, but stop telling us we're not seeing what we're seeing. Stop telling us that there's actually a victim narrative for something that is in fact purposeful and logical. It might not be great. It might not be healthy. It might not be wonderful for your self-esteem to be like, no, I'm on a shit ton of diet pills because I have to be because I'm closing the Versace show in a month. That's what's going on, man. I smoke cigarettes. I don't eat. That's what it is. Hey, that's the job. Like, I get that. Everyone would be like, yeah, I mean, that's modeling. It sucks, but that's what it is. If she doesn't like it. I'm sure she could quit and go work at H&R Block if she really wanted to. But it's the gaslighting. It's the gaslighting. And again, what I have such a problem with is that there's a victim card that you're playing. There's a victim card. It's not like, I just do a lot of cardio and I love to run. Mm -mm -mm. I have a disease. Everyone in this family has a disease. Have you noticed that? They either have Lyme disease or they have Hashimoto's. Everyone in this family, this incredibly wealthy, incredibly well-nourished, you know, access to the best medical care. They're the sickest people in America. That's odd. That's odd. And that doesn't explain anything but lies oh filler explains it possibly an eating disorder explains it a need for attention explains it oh <laughs> okay the simplest answer is almost always the right one versus a statistical impossibility per the cdc versus a mysterious illness that ha just happens to coincide with the rise of your modeling career I have, I just, and I blame Yolanda. I blame Yolanda. I mean, these girls are so young, impressionable, babes in the woods in this modeling industry. I know, I know a lot of PR people and reporters who worked with Gigi and Bella before they got famous. They say they're all really sweet. Really, especially Gigi. She's like so sweet and like, great. That's great. I feel so sorry for them that they were raised how they were, you know? And Yolanda herself is a model, and we know, we know, well, maybe you guys don't, but I do, the number one predictor of a girl's body image, how, how, how I feel about my body is chiefly influenced by how my mother feels about her own body. When I hear my mom complain about her body, 
it's 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 like a parrot of how what I complain about mine, right? It's exactly the same. And my mom is not a model. My mom never made her living off her looks. Well, kind of. She was a flight attendant, and like they were basically models. But she was always a real estate mogul and an RN, and like there was a lot of to fall back on besides just a pretty face. That's never all she was. Yolanda, not so much. Not really. She was her face and she was who she was married to. That's it. And so she was thrusting her daughters into the limelight. And holy shit, does it show. Like copy paste those issues. And I feel so bad for those girls. But again, Bella's an adult now and hurt people actually don't get to hurt people. I'm sorry that you grew up with a viper for a mother, but you don't get to go on the cover of Vogue and lie to a bunch of other young teenage girls and try to convince them that, oh, <laughs> you're going to grow up and just become a supermodel. Your lips are just automatically going to puff up and you're just going to be like beautiful and like emaciated and, oh, I don't have any disorder. No, I don't have any disorder. And no, your eyebrows, they're just automatically going to migrate up like this. They're just going to do this. One day, this is puberty. This is how puberty works. And those girls are gonna wake up day after day, running to the mirror, looking for their Disney villain brows. And they're going to feel like absolute failures because they're not finding them. And I, you don't have to be 13 to feel that way. You can be 26 and be like, what, what am I doing wrong? You're not surgerizing yourself and you're not lying and gaslighting. We have, so much to learn from Queen Baloney. We have so much to learn from Queen Bee about gaslighting. And I know some of you guys had asked for a video on The Bachelor, Clayton, what's his name? Clayton Underbite? Who is that guy besides Tall? He has a goddamn underbite. Can we, I hate tall men. I mean, I love them, but they know it. It's like, all they have to do is just be tall and they could literally have an underbite. He looks like one of those Easter Island head emojis. I'm sorry, but he does. He does. Anyway. But he was like called out for gaslighting these girls because he was like fucking both of them in the fantasy suite. And he's like, you didn't tell me specifically I wasn't allowed to fuck them. And they're like, what? And it was just so ghastly, a ghastly gaslight. I recently dated someone who started to gaslight me and not even personally, it was professionally. We were also maybe going to do something professional, this professional project together that was like my idea. Like it was my company. And I asked him a very blunt question. It's funny, like I'm much more susceptible to being gaslit personally, professionally. I am a completely different person. Like it is, I am a completely, completely different person. And I feel so sorry for people who don't know that because they find it out in the hardest of hard ways. Like personally, I'm like, mm, I'm like a Care Bear. Professionally, I'm a coiled snake, just, just waiting. And he went straight into gaslighting mode. You're putting words in my mouth. You're threatening me. I had asked him one question, one blunt question. That's it. You're putting words in my mouth. I feel threatened. I'm like, what? I said, when I threaten you, you'll know, okay? Um, you people always do this. You people who? YouTubers? Left-handers? Or women? And you know, <clears throat> I love it when someone tries to gaslight me. Do you know why? Because I'm so good at doing it back. When they try, I'm like, oh, oh. here we go. You know my motto, I don't start it, I'll finish it. So when someone does that to me, it's game fucking on. I said, you're being a little hysterical right now. I gaslight them so much harder than they think uh, that I can. And they don't see it coming, right? Because guys who do this, guys who do it like right out of the gate, they're so used to it working. Like there's a reason they default to this is because historically they've been very successful at it. Historically though, they've never met me and they've never met any of you guys either. So I go for the fucking throat. I'm like, you sound hysterical. Maybe you should get your testosterone checked. What? I mean, you sound a little unbalanced. You sound really shrill. I feel like maybe there's too much estrogen in your system. You wanna to talk to me about being a crazy woman? You're the crazy woman. You think you've got the biggest stick in the room? Maybe you do until you're in a room with me. 
don't fucking come for me. And I just keep going and going. I understand you've been through a lot lately. There's just been a lot of strain in your life because you kind of have no direction. There's like nothing to really anchor you. I know that you really don't have any friends, but this shrill, hysterical reaction for someone who's just trying to help you out. I was really just trying to throw you a bone professionally because I know that you need it. It's really a bad look. So maybe just go to the endocrinologist, okay? It's great if you can do this in person and then lapse into a Southern accent because that's really patronizing. You know, just bless your heart. I know that you're trying so hard. I can see it. No, I can. And you know what? I'm just going to pray for you. No, we're all going to pray. We've all been praying, yes, for you just to get that testosterone back up. I know because like, I know that you have it in you to act like a man, but this just like, I just don't know that this is it. Maybe you should just take a little bit of a nap. Maybe that would help. Does it help? I don't know. Because right now, ooh, right now, it's kind of like I'm talking to my sister's kids or something. Yeah, just like, ooh, ah, rah, rah, rah. Or like a small dog. You know how small dogs get. I know. When they can't get that sausage off the counter. I know. So why don't we just put you to bed? No, that's enough. No, okay. All right. I'm going to get you some lemonade. All right. It's fun. I like it. Because men have done it to us our whole fucking lives. They do it on the micro, in a relationship, in a friendship, at the office. They do it on the macro with laws and policy. <laughs> so I love to give it back. I love it. Let's say, though, you need to gaslight because you're trying to get away with something. Now, long ago and far away, we did an Eva Week video. And people love to reference this when they cancel me and make hate videos. How to cheat and get away with it. I've said a million times, and I understand this is like too high concept for the uglies and the dumpies. We have to know the tricks people use against us to gird ourselves against them. You know, it takes a thief to catch a thief. It's like if you're a doctor and you only want to study a vaccine, but never the disease. That's probably unwise. Maybe it's happening right now in America. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to get into it. We have to understand how these things work. And you know what? What are we gonna move through life thinking that like people don't ever deserve to be manipulated? That's pathetic, that's pathetic. So you can call me a Machiavellian reptile. I am, thank you. I get a better outcome from life usually than you probably do. Because I, instead of sitting there saying, this isn't fair, that's not fair, that's not fair that how they act. I say, fine, I don't like how they act. I'm gonna beat them at their own game. I'm gonna play that, I'm gonna play it better and smarter and dirtier if I have to, because remember, there's no such thing as fighting dirty. <laughs> There's just fighting. So in the beginning, I told you that Bella employed a really genius technique that criminals employ, which is confessing to something small to detract from something large, okay? Gaslighting works best if you can, if you can accept that people are going to find out about something. Gaslighting is much more difficult when you're caught unawares, like anything. Forewarned is forearmed, right? And if you're going to really get the wool over someone. And I guess there are non-nefarious reasons to gaslight someone. When I was gaslighting a guy I dated, it was after college, I was new to New York and I, I was cheating on him. I was a bad girl once upon a time, which is why I can like tell you the machinations of bad people because I've done it, you know? I'm not now because it's like, it's not worth it. It, it was always like, it was always something inside me that was motivating that bad behavior. And it just felt better when I just looked at what was actually going on instead of like hurting other people. I don't want to do that. I don't. At the time though, I wasn't ready to face that. And what I was doing, I told myself I had to gaslight my boyfriend to protect him from me. I loved him. He was amazing on paper. He was just never going to give me all of what I need. I know. I know. Why not just break up with him? Believe me. I know that. Like in hindsight, it's like so obvious. At the time I felt stuck and I... That's a whole separate video. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go get my needs met with these random dudes. It started small, just flirting. And then, well, cop a few good feels. Well, maybe a kiss at the bar. Boop, 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 boop. Crimes escalate. And I'm like, I need to keep him in the dark to protect him. I didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want him finding out. And so I needed to, to gaslight him. I was, and it's awful. It's awful. And I carry a lot of guilt about that. But I can also tell you what I was doing because I did it really effectively. 
because I had that moment where I'm like, look, I'm not going to come clean to John. I'm not. So what I'm going to do is, is lie. And I better be good at it unless I want this all blowing up in my face. And for the record, it didn't. And I never came clean to him. And I feel bad about that. And he has to live his whole life feeling like he was crazy for suspecting me of doing exactly what I was doing. And you know what? It's karma. The guys have gaslit me. I think by now the playing field is even like I think the karmic scales have, have evened, hopefully. But look, so what I did was I mapped out the possible ways I could get caught as I really, you know, I talk about the war map. Well, you have to do a war map if you're going to be gaslighting people, too. It's like, OK, could he see me? Could someone tell him? Could he see my text messages? Blah, blah, blah. Could he see something pop up? How could it go? And I employed a strategy that Bella employed, that a lot of criminals employ. Confess to something small so that people think you're being honest. And that way, they don't think that there's anything more. You see this on cop shows all the time. All the time. Come on, Angela. We know we got you for the bank robbery. Why don't you just confess? Hey, it wasn't me. I didn't rob that bank. Come on. We got you dead to rights. All right, look, look. I stole one of those pens, okay? I stole the pen on the chain. I'll admit it. I took the pen. I walked out with some of those deposit slips. So sue me, all right? But I didn't rob that bank. And the cops look at each other and they're like, all right. And it always goes like that. Like the cops are like, well, he confessed to something small. It's like, hey, I hated the guy, but I didn't kill him. Okay, I took the watch off the body, but I didn't choke him, right? But this is actually not how it goes in real life. This is actually not how duplicitous liars operate. They know that if they can cop to something small after holding out, ooh, all right, you got me. I got a nose job, but I didn't get filler. People are more psychologically likely to see them as telling the truth. There is a name for this. I think it's called, shit, I can't remember what it's called. If you're a psychologist, please let me know because I know that there is a name for this. I, mean, I talked about it in videos before. So I referenced it, I think, with Britney Spears one time. Mm. But it's very effective. So I thought, okay, if John catches me with Dylan, I'm going to say, okay, like we're coworkers, he flirts with me, I'm not going to lie. I don't mind that he flirts. It makes the day go by a little faster. It makes work a lot easier because he can like get my projects to the boss with minimum effort from me. Like I'm kind of using him and like, yeah, if I have to flirt a little bit, okay. But babe, that's all it is. I'm using this dude. It's so fucking twisted, but it was also really effective. It's effective because my boyfriend thought, <sighs> okay, I'm not crazy. I am seeing something there, but there's an explanation for it. So it dissipated his cognitive dissonance. Whereas, and this is what gaslighting does. It's this, it's this tension that mounts and mounts and mounts of what I'm seeing doesn't match what I know to be true. What this person is telling me is not jiving with logic and my critical thinking. <clears throat> but if you can give an outlet, a steam release for that, hey, he does like me. I let him flirt, but that's all it is. Okay, I have had my nose done, but that's it. I mean, why would I lie about other things if I'm telling you about the big surgery? Why would I cop to a big surgery when I was so young and throw my mom under the bus, even though I fucking hate her, but I never wanna throw my mom under the bus. <clears throat> never wanted that. Why would I cop to a big surgery, but not confess to like something as little as lip injections? Why would I do that? I don't know, dude, but that is the deal with Bella Hadid. Okay, that's the deal. She's gaslighting you. And I gotta say, she's pretty good at it. She could still use some of my master tips, but she's starting, she's starting off pretty well. She's only 25, get to my age, Mwah. I'll see you on that TED Talk circuit, babe. So confessing to a little thing makes you seem magnanimous for finally coming clean. You seem brave, right? You also seem sort of relatable. When I was telling my boyfriends like, hey, I'm trying to get ahead at work. Yeah, I let this dude flirt with me. Yeah, I let him text me in the off hour. I play ball. I'm, I'm just working the system, okay? This not only made me look smarter, it made me 
it still kept me like an angel in the eyes of my boyfriend. You know, it's like, oh, Shallon's smart. She's not a cheater. She's smart. She's working the system. Because I knew that was something he valued. He was like a corporate shark. He was an investment banker. Like, I knew I picked that specifically because he would be like, yeah, I do that too. Then I added on. Then I played some sort of card. So this is what gaslighters do. First of all, they're going to tell you you're not seeing what you're seeing, right? And they either do that by telling you you're crazy or playing some sort of pity card. You're crazy. Fuck you. You people always do this, right? I feel threatened. Or how could you possibly think I'm a drug addict? I'm in a wheelchair. How would I even get drugs? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, you're always slurring your words and like your eyes are rolling around in these weird videos you post. Really? Well, I'm in a wheelchair. By the way, this isn't a random example. This is a girl I know I went to high school with. She is in a wheelchair and she is a hardcore drug addict. And I don't understand how people are falling for this, but she is gaslighting. She's a professional gaslighter. It's all she posts about her health woes. And I'm not saying she doesn't have any, but she doesn't have all the ones that she does. I see you. If you're watching this, I see you. You keep posting the shit you're posting. I get one glass of wine in me. I'm going to flame you out because I'm sick of you asking people for money. You're a drug addict. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Anyway, so they're going to play a cra You're crazy. I'm a victim. And these were great in concert, right? These were great in concert. I think Bella was doing this without even having to say it. I got a nose job at 14. She could have said 16. She could have said, you know, I know a lot of girls who got nose jobs in high school. My high school had a lot of Jewish girls, a lot of Persian girls. They all got nose jobs. The Jewish girls, um, their noses turned out good. The Persian girls, their noses grew back. If you're Persian, did you, do you find that to be true? All my Persian friends are like, my nose grew back. Hmm. Ancestry finds a way, right? Just stick with your, stick with your nose if you like it. It's, it's great. Look how you look. If it makes you happy. Anyway, I digress. I think Bella pointed out that she was 14 purposely to look like a victim and make her mom the bad guy. If she had just said, yeah, I got a nose job, it'd be like, see, you're a fucking liar, dude. Because the nose job could have happened three years ago. Maybe she didn't get it when she was 14. May Who knows? That could be more life. I don't trust anything out of these girls' mouths. But I think that was her subtly playing a victim card without even having to play it. Ooh. Mm. When you look at it that way, holy shit, she's good at this. But while it's typical to play the victim if you're the gaslighter, basic, child's play. You really want to get a masterclass in gaslighting, you make the gaslight E the victim. Mm. This is what I did to my ex. Babe, listen. I'm not gonna tell you you're crazy for thinking this because you're not, okay? You wanna validate them because that's gonna depressurize the situation, right? You're throwing them off the scent. You have been under so much stress. You're overworked at work. I know you've got that weird bitch breathing down your neck in the corner, blah, 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 blah. whatever it is, I understand. And look, like I get that like I haven't been as plugged in and connected. I know that and I'm sorry. So like, I wanna apologize to you. I had no intention of stopping what I was doing, none. But I needed to throw him off the scent so that I had more room to maneuver. I was a bad person, but I was good at it. <laughs> and same with this dude. Recently, it's like, hey, I'm not gonna be the victim. I'm turning it around. You wanna play the victim? Let's double down on that. You wanna act like you're the poor abused man? Are you fucking kidding me? Cool, I'm gonna press on that and make you look pathetic. Yeah, I know it's been hard for you since you have no friends and really no home base and your life is like meaningless and spiraling out of control. Oh, I know that's why you feel so attacked because the world does attack you because you're pathetic. Bless your heart. You want that lemonade now? Oh my gosh. I just, like a little dog trying to get that snow sedge and just can't reach it. I don't know. It's very effective. Because look, there's two kinds of people you're gaslighting. The ones who deserve it and the ones who don't. My boyfriend back then didn't deserve it. So I wasn't trying to make him feel worse about himself. I was trying to just get my way. 
I was just trying to get my way. I didn't want to create problems. I wasn't doing it from a place of resentment at all. I was doing it as twisted as it sounds from a place of selfish, selfishness slash protection. And w there's a lot to unpack there. Believe me, and I've done it with my therapist. This other dude, oh no, 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 he deserved it. I was going for blood. So I took two different tactics depending on what I was after because what that other dude was trying to do to me was blood for me. He was trying to humiliate me. He was trying to sit me down in a business way. I don't fucking think so. <laughs> you think I got to where I am? By <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, I feel so sorry for men who, who don't listen to me. I wear a necklace that says revenge. And you think I'm gonna roll over for gaslighting? Good luck. Good luck, my guy. So he was out for blood? Let's play. You wanna start it? I'll finish it. So you have to take a completely different tactic. You have to attack the ego, their sense of self. You have to humiliate them. They wanna act like you're a hysterical woman? They're a more hysterical woman. They wanna act like they're a rich man? Mom, I am a rich man. Two can play at this little game. The best way to shut down a gaslighter is to gaslight them harder. And it's difficult. It is so difficult because it requires neutrality. You have to anticipate at all times that someone is going to gaslight you. And I know, I know that that's like kind of a shitty way to move through the world, anticipating that people are going to be lying to us. But like, look, I operate from a manipulative standpoint. And look, we have we have worked here hard here on this channel to demystify the word manipulative. Manipulation is charm. Manipulation is flirting. Manipulation is just affecting an outcome. It is how we move through life. It doesn't have to mean I'm hurting someone else. Positive manipulation means negotiation. Okay, what do you need? What do I need? How can we meet in the middle? How can we get the best possible outcome? How can I offer you something you want and you need? Okay? But because I operate as a very strategic person and I see the world like that. Call it Machiavellian, call it evil, call it bitchy, call it whatever the fuck you want, but that's who I am. And honestly, it works out pretty good for me. Then again, I'm forewarned and forearmed. I assume that everyone is operating like that. I am ready to be gaslit. I'm, I anticipate it. I assume that that's coming my way. And so I'm not really caught off guard when it happens. Am I disappointed? Of course. I was extremely disappointed when that guy recently did it. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. We had professional and personal entanglements and I was like, wow, so this is who you are. And it, I mean, it broke my heart, but it didn't stun me. I wasn't like, Ugh! I don't know what to do. I knew exactly what to do because I had anticipated it in my mind, not with him, but just with life in general. I was not afraid to look at that as potential outcomes. You know, and so much of the time gaslighters get one over on us. They prey on our fear. You're crazy. If you say that again, I'm going to leave you. Oh, don't call me crazy. I don't want people to think I'm crazy. You can think I'm crazy. I am fucking crazy, but not in the way you think. I'm crazy like a fox. I'm not crazy like a woman locked up in a Victorian psych ward. No, 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 no. So when we can free ourselves, when we can accept that hate is freedom, gaslighting in a way is freedom then we can combat it then we're not caught unawares then we can say all right this is how it's going to be i'm going to take a beat and i'm going to think how am i going to do this what's the uno reversal card here because there always is one and that's what a gaslighter is not expecting now i can't do this work for you because there's a million different situations where someone's going to gaslight you you alone are going to have to get good enough at being neutral and looking at life a little bit more strategically in all areas, charm, manipulation, all the different ways manipulation can play out, positive and negative, so that you can be more adept at rolling with the gaslighting punches when they occur, okay? And you know what? Practice gaslighting people you hate. Just, just practice it. Oh, you, no, you didn't say you wanted dressing on the side. No, no, Crystal, you didn't. No, you didn't. Just practice. Invite all your enemies to lunch and just gaslight the fuck out of them for 45 minutes. <laughs> just, just see how it goes. Just see how it goes. One of my friends, she said that she went to see her boyfriend's 
soccer game recently. She went to a soccer game and he did not say hi to her. Like he wouldn't acknowledge her, but said hi to like her little brother who was there. And afterwards she's like, what the fuck was that? Like you couldn't say hi to me. And she was there for like an hour and a half. And he just was like, I think he's cheating on her. We all do, but okay. And cause we were talking about gaslighting cause I was telling her I was gonna do this video. And she's like, oh, he, he, my boyfriend gaslit me the other day. And I was like, what happened? And she's like, I called him out. And he's like, I said hi to you. No, I, I said hi to you, I'm, I did. And she's like, no, you didn't. And I wanted to be like, well, that's probably because his mistress was there, but okay. And I was like, you know what you should have done? Gaslit him right back. And she's like, how would I have done that? Say you weren't even there. What? But I was there and he ignored you. You have to sometimes fight crazy with crazy. Imagine if she'd been like, oh, you're right, babe. You didn't say hi. I wasn't even there. Yes, you were. Mm, no, I, I wasn't. No, I was at the wine bar with Kristen and Emma. No, you were at the soccer game. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Are you okay? I wasn't there. What are you talking about? You were there. If I was there, you would have said hi to me, right? I... Holy shit, have we reversed that? Even if you won't walk him down that path and he'll be like, I, well, he's going to see how demented it looks when someone denies the truth. And he's gonna be like, what is she fucking talking about? You wanna act like I'm crazy? I'll show you crazy. You wanna think I'm crazy here? I'll show you crazy up here. Gaslighters do it because they think it's an easy win. You know, they think, oh, this is easy. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put her down. I'm gonna make her think she's dumb. If you stand up and fight, even if you're crazy in the way that you fight, they might think twice because they're not gonna know what they, what they're going to get the next time around. And again, that's gonna throw a gaslighter off. That guy did that. I said hi to you because he knew that she was gonna roll over and she did. And I was like, why didn't you fight him? Why didn't you like fight back on that? I just say, no, I don't appreciate you gaslighting me. You did that because of X, Y, and Z. There was some other chick there you didn't want me to see or you didn't want to acknowledge me in front of. Well, she didn't say that because she's afraid to leave him. If you're not afraid to leave someone, you're able to look in the face the root of the gaslighting. You know what I mean? And with this dude who was gaslighting me, I cut him out of that project. I wasn't afraid to lose him. I'm like, you actually bring nothing to the table. So I'm... I was like, this is such a bad play on your part because you you have zero cards to play here. I hold all the cards. I'm daddy, you are nobody. And I just let you, I just let you cut your own throat. I give you enough rope to hang yourself and boy oh boy, did you ever. I don't need you for sex, I don't need you for love and I certainly don't need your ass for business. And <laughs> thanks for making that a really easy decision. It sucks, it's a shame, <laughs> but come on. But my friend, she can't leave that dude. So she was swallowing what he was giving her and couldn't fight back because if she did, she was gonna implode their relationship over someone not saying hi to her. But it's never about what it's about, you know? It's why won't my boyfriend acknowledge me in public? Well, girl, it's because he was acknowledging someone else in that public at that particular time. <sighs> I wanna know your thoughts on Bella. I wanna know your thoughts on Yolanda this woman, this woman. What other celebrity moms out there do you think are kind of like this? Do you think Lisa Rinna is a bit like this with her daughters? I mean, who is it, Delilah has already said, oh no, I haven't gotten my lips done, fucking liar, liar. And then the other one, that like sad creature, she, I don't know why she's a model. She looks so unhappy in every photo, just miserable, miserable. I don't get it. Anyway. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me if you have been guilty of gaslighting someone and what was your motivation? What was your motivation? And tell me the time someone has gaslit you. We're gonna be back next time, Shalligators. I'll see you later.